hi everyone in this video i am going to explain different modes of operation of electronic counter so electronic counter is also working like an instrument it is used to count the number of pulses by using a, a decade counter so the decade counter can be easily incorporated in a commercial test instrument called an electronic counter so a decade counter by itself behaves as a totalizer by totalizing by totaling the pulses applied to it during the time interval that a gate pulse is present so here we are taking a time interval in the time interval uh, through one input we are giving the number of pulses and our aim is to count the number of pulses a decade counter is used to count the number of pulses once the pulses count has been met with 10 then a power flow occurs <clears throat> typical different modes of operation of this electronic counter are one is totalizing which is used to count the number of pulses another one is a frequency mode where we can calculate the unknown frequency of a signal and the third one is period which is used to measure the unknown time period of the signal so the first one is to calculate the total number of pulses second one is to calculate the unknown frequency and the third one is to calculate the unknown time period so in the totalizing mode as i said here the input signal is applied to one of the inputs of the two input and gate another input is a constant dc supply <coughs> another input is a constant dc supply when this switch is closed see this switch is by default it is in open state when this switch is closed what happens the input signal continuously applies to the gate as one input and when this input is applied so what happens the and gate starts counting it may be one suppose here it is always one let it let us consider here we are giving plus 5 volt supply so for this 5 volt supply what happens whenever we are having a pulse when this pulse occurs that means a logic high state and this plus 5 volts continuously produces logic one state so one one becomes one when this one occurs decade counter starts one count that means plus one okay and for zero there is no count and again whenever the second pulse occurred again whenever the second pulse occurred what happens this one this one becomes again one one more plus one more decade counter will count the next pulse that is plus two so this will happen up to zero to nine 0 to 9 nothing but decade 10 up to 10 pulses it will count once the pulses are counting is over then that means uh, decade counter when it meets the 10 pulses it gives a power flow that means power flow becomes 1 again once the power flow occurred again it counts the next pulses that means it counts 0 to 9 again starts the count from 0 1 2 3 and so on again 9 again when it reaches 0 9 again it starts from 0 so like this for every 0 to 9 for every decade counting operation that means from for every 10 pulses count there exists one power flow okay <clears throat> so in this totalizing modes uh, in the totaling modes of operation of electronic counter as shown in the figure the input pulses are counted totalized by the decade counter as long as the switch is closed so if the count pulse exceeds the capacity of the decade counter the war flow indicator the war flow indicator is activated and the counter starts counting again so this is what i have said now and the second mode of operation is a frequency mode i told you already the first mode is used to count the number of pulses and the second mode as the name tells that it is a frequency mode where we can count the number of pulses the number of pulses is nothing but pulses per second here we are counting the number of pulses but in a fixed time interval per second so number of pulses per second nothing but it is giving a frequency so what we are doing here we are counting the frequency is equal to what do you mean by frequency number of pulses per second so that's why f is equal to n by t this is what we are doing here f is equal to n by t suppose if we are going for the frequency time period measurement t is equal to n by f okay so what are the changes we have done here compared to the previous diagram here we have taken and gate followed by decade counter followed by digital readout oscillator 
instead of taking the workflow here we have taken the digital read out oscilloscope to give the number of pulses to give the number of pulses state so input signal input signal we are taking a gating signal and the second input signal is coming from this uh, for this and gate is a decayed number of slots so one mega hedge slot has been directly applied at to one switch and again it is divided into by 10 again by 10 again by 10 so and so on it will be divided in the ranges of 10 so it's like a decayed operation so divided by 10 operation we have taken here so that we, we are having all the time periods so whenever the required time period has been selected whenever the gating pulses occurred the corresponding number of pulses have been counted and these pulses for every new pulse indicated counter for every new pulse decade counter starts counting and whenever the 10 pulses have been met the digital readout oscilloscope indicates again the output <coughs> So, if the time interval in which the pulses are being totalized is accurately controlled, the counter operates in the frequency mode. So, accurate control of the time interval is achieved by applying a rectangular pulse of known duration at the under gate as shown in the figure in place of DC voltage source. So, this technique is referred to as gating the counter. So, how the counter is uh, being operated by applying a gating signal, that's why it is a gating counter. The block diagram of this electronic operation, electronic uh, counter operating in the frequency mode is shown in the figure. The frequency of the input signal is computed as I said F is equal to N by T. So, what do you mean by F and T frequency of the signal? N is nothing but a number of pulses, T is nothing but a time period. So, the frequency of the input signal and is pulses to be counted and duration of the gating pulse. So, we have taken a gating pulse like this, a rectangular pulse or a gating pulse. So, in this time period, we have this operation to be done. Either counter operation may be incremented or decremented because of this pulse width. So, the duration of this uh, gating pulse is given as T. Now we are taking the uh, frequency calculation F is equal to N by T. Coming to this Pre, pre, uh, period mode period mode is nothing but it is a time period mode so it is nothing but time period mode where we are calculating the time period of the signal instead of frequency in the previous mode we have seen the frequency calculation f is equal to n by t okay here also the same t is equal to n by f just their formula in the previous uh, mode of operation has been altered to get the time period to know the time period of the signal okay that sometimes it may be required to measure the time period and sometimes it may be required to measure the frequency and sometimes we are also going to measure uh, amplitude as well okay so that's why depending upon the type of operation and as uh, and the first what is the first operation Frequency, number of pulses to be measured, number of pulses, how many pulses are there in the received input signal, we don't know, so that many we can have to count. So, in the period mode, <coughs> this is the block diagram, what we have taken additionally, additionally we have taken a flip-flop, see, additionally we have taken a flip-flop, we have applied some square signal that will be converted into a gating pulse, that will be converted into a gating pulse, and uh, this f is equal to 1 mega h previous diagram we have divided this f equal to 1 mega h at uh, regular intervals of time by 10 by 10 like that to get the uh, ratio operations but here we have the same signal f is equal to 1 mega h the entire clock is applied to the input of the gate so in some applications it is desired to measure the frequency uh, and as well as period of the signal rather than its frequency since the period is reciprocal to the frequency, I told you already time period is reciprocal to the frequency. This is the main reason why we have altered this formula. It is the, as it is the reciprocal of frequency, it can easily be measured by using the input signal as a gating pulse and counting the clock pulses as shown in the figure. So the period of the input signal is determined by the number of pulses known frequency number of pulses of known frequency or known time period so you see here 
the period the period is determined by the, the period of the input signal is determined from the number of pulses of known frequency the, of known frequency we are giving or known time duration which are counted by the counter during one cycle during one cycle of the input signal so the period is computed as same formula what we have discussed in the previous case frequency mode there we have written for the time period uh, for the frequency unknown frequency now we need to write it for the frequency there we have written it for the frequency now we need to write it for the period so f is equal to n by f so where what is n pulses to be counted and frequency of the clock f is nothing but the frequency of the clock this one okay so whatever the mode of operation that we are taking here according to that we are changing the back to block diagram that's it so one time we are taking the input signal here directly the input receiver input signal is applying and uh, here we are taking a reference supply in the first case when we come into the frequency mode and the amplitude mode uh, frequency mode and time period mode then we are taking the different uh, block diagrams uh, depending upon the requirement okay so this is all about uh, different types of mode of operation thank you